November 9th, Blessed Margaret Colonna, Virgin, Third or Second Order. A member of the princely Roman family of the Colonna, Margaret was born in Rome, the capital of Christendom, in 1210. Very early in life, she lost both her parents. She was then placed under the guardianship of her two brothers, John and James. When she had grown to young womanhood, her older brother insisted that she enter a brilliant marriage. But Margaret, whose name signifies pearl, held her virginity in such high regard that she was willing to sacrifice all the glamour of the world in order to retain it. She firmly refused to yield to her brother's plan, declaring that she would be espoused to none other than the immortal spouse of souls. Her younger brother championed her resolution. With two maids, Margaret withdrew to a quiet country house belonging to her family and situated in the mountains near Palestrina. There, the group devoted themselves to practices of piety and penance, as well as to works of charity. They wore coarse garments, similar to those of the poor Clares, and mapped out their daily routine as far as possible according to the strict rule of that order. In her new life, Margaret's relatives caused her many trials and annoyances, but she considered them as marks of the love of her divine bridegroom, seeking in this way to disengage her heart from the world, so that she might belong to him alone. And Christ our Lord actually appeared to her at this time and placed a crown of lilies on her head and a ring upon her finger. In order to secure the merit of obedience, she and her companions meant to join the poor Clares of Assisi, who had already offered to receive them. But a grievous illness attacked Margaret and prevented her plan. Somewhat restored to health, she consulted her younger brother James in Rome, who had meanwhile become a priest and cardinal. At his suggestion, and with the approval of Pope Urban IV, Margaret turned the country house on the quiet mountain near Palestrina into a poor Clare convent where she and several like-minded young women observed the rule of St. Clare as well as her continued infirmity as well as her continued infirmity permitted it. Almighty God rewarded her pious zeal with many consolations. Also favors of another kind were not wanting. Our Lord gave her an opportunity to taste a little of the sufferings he had endured, a wound open in her right side and kept growing wider and deeper, causing her untold suffering during the last seven years of her life. She thanked God for this favor up to the last day of her life. When that day came, she said before receiving Holy Viaticum, I thank thee, dear Lord, for having permitted my body to become weak and infirm, so that I could the more freely return my soul to thee. Assisted in her last moments by her brother James and the prayers of her sisters, she surrendered her soul into the hands of God on December 30th, 1284. Later, when the convent of Palestrina was transferred to Rome, the sisters took with them the precious remains of their mother and foundress and had them entombed in their new convent of St. Sylvester. Innumerable miracles occurred at the grave of this holy virgin. In 1847, Pope Pius IX gave renewed approval to the veneration paid to her for centuries. <clears throat> on suffering as a sign of God's love. Consider how the love of God manifested itself in the many sufferings that were sent to Blessed Margaret. At a very early age, she was deprived of her parents, and who would not feel compassion for the little orphan? But God used this means to disengage her heart from the world, so that it seemed to pass into eternity with her departed parents for she now determined to devote herself entirely to the service of God. Her relatives turned against her. They mocked and derided her, and so her heart was no longer attached to anyone in the world, 
and she could belong to God whole and undivided. God may permit us to suffer a painful loss, which we regard perhaps as a great misfortune. Often it is only a manifestation of his love, a grace which detaches our hearts from the perishable things of earth and turns them towards the imperishable and eternal things of heaven. He permits certain people to whom we have been much attached to become unfaithful and to turn against us so that we may turn our hearts to him, the eternally faithful one. In the past, you have perhaps complained where you should have rejoiced with the prophet. The snare is broken, and we are delivered. Psalm 123. Consider how God sent Margaret additional sufferings in order to lead her to still greater perfection. Serious illness and continued infirmity tended to disengage her even from herself, for she had to give up her intentions of entering a strict convent and commit herself entirely to God's plans. She did not resent this in any way, but was filled with the sweetest consolation in making this sacrifice to the beloved of her soul. When you shall arrive thus far, says Thomas Akempis, that tribulation shall be sweet to you, then think that it is well with you, for you have found a paradise on earth. Our self-love and imperfect love of God the reason why you have not found yet this paradise on earth. Consider that God's love manifested itself in the sufferings he sent blessed Margaret, inasmuch as he led her to eternal glory on this secure and meritorious way. According to all theologians, it is a sign of predestination if God leads a soul along the pathway of suffering. The pain of these sufferings, however, does not compare with the glory that will be the soul's portion in eternity. That is why Thomas Akempis says again, if there had been anything better and more beneficial to man's salvation than suffering, Christ certainly would have showed it. But now he manifestly exhorts us all if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. May we be encouraged by the example and strengthened by the intercession of Blessed Margaret. Prayer of the Church O God, who didst inflame the Virgin, Blessed Margaret, with thy love, and glorify her through her contempt for the world. Grant us at her intercession, ever faithfully to carry the cross, and to cling only to thee, through Christ our Lord. Blessed Margaret Colonna, pray for us. Thank you.